As a reminder, please stop pushing credentials to prod. This story and more on ThreatWire. What happens when a ransomware group decides to stop operations? On July 3rd, 2025, a ransomware group known as Hunters International announced that it would cease operations, allegedly. The memo was published to their dark web leak site. Hunters International was in operation for two years with their victims including international banks and the FBI. In their formal closure announcement, they stated, After careful consideration and in light of recent developments, we have decided to close the Hunters International project. This decision was not made lightly and we recognize the impact it has on the organizations we have interacted with. But this is not the first time Hunters International threatened to close. They originally planned to shut shop in November 2024. It was later exposed by threat intelligence firm Group IB that Hunters International was going to rebrand to focus on data theft and extortion-only operations. But what about the current victims affected by Hunters International? As a, and I quote, gesture of goodwill, Hunters International are giving away the decryption keys for free. So if you were affected, be sure to reach out. The creator of Curl Command Line Tool published a public proclamation about security reports found using AI. Submitting slop on HackerOne will get you banned from researching on the project. Two months later, an AI chatbot is now the top rated red teamer in the US on HackerOne. The bot is the product of the company XBOW, which since joining HackerOne in August 2024, has submitted almost 1,060 vulnerabilities. They published a blog post on June 24th, walking through why and how they did this. Why? To continue to push their AI pen testing tooling and to get it working in more real world environments. They also included the accuracy of the XBOW tooling findings. Of the 1,060 vulnerabilities the bot has submitted, 130 were resolved vulnerabilities, 303 were classified as triage, 208 marked as duplicates, 209 as informative, and 36 as non-applicable. Over the past 90 days alone, the vulnerabilities submitted were classified as 54 critical, 242 high, 524 medium, and 65 low severity issues by program owners. Notably, around 45% of XBOW's findings are still awaiting resolution, highlighting the volume and impact of the submissions across the live targets. I'm curious to hear how you, as a human, and the viewer feel about this. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. A major 10.0 CVSS vulnerability was patched in two Cisco products. The CVE, CVE 2025-2309, affected the Unified Communications Manager and the Unified Communications Manager Session Management Edition. What gets a 10 out of 10 critical rating on the CVSS program? Turns out they left hard-coded credentials in code. Cisco formally says, this vulnerability is due to the presence of static user credentials for the root account that are reserved for use during development. An attacker could exploit this vulnerability by using the account to log into an affected system. A successful exploit could allow the attacker to log in to the affected system and execute arbitrary commands as the root user. Cisco also states there is no workaround for this vulnerability, so be sure to update ASAP. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of July 7th, 2025. If you enjoyed this show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Apologies for the shorter episode today. I know I promised four stories on the live stream, but as you can hear, I got sick while finished writing the show, so I had to cut a story out. I'm Ali Diamond, and if you want to find me online, you could find me everywhere at Ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.